there is a deep desire for black people to search for their history. Sometimes I just think this quest for identity, you know, what aspect of your identity are you searching for? When we look at films like The Gods of Egypt and we see Pharaoh, Ramses and all of the Egyptians, they're all white, but in your mind you know, you're like, wait, hold on, this is based in Africa. Some people do leave the fold because they find that what they understand of Christianity is not true. People are digging way back before Christianity and before Judaism and looking at Egyptology and, and, and looking at the background of a black man and thinking, well, you know, where do I fit in in all of that? It's stumbling into new narratives, new ideas and religions that affirm them. They don't have to compromise their identity. They don't have to apologise for being black. So nowadays, if a pastor's preaching a sermon, um, you can verify a lot of what they're saying. When people were growing up a lot of times, we didn't have this information available on Google at our fingertips. You know, all the crass things that young people is becoming their norm today, the world are talking about it, but the church don't seem to be engaging in the normal everyday conversations that young people want to engage in. They kind of dismiss it, and by dismissing it, they're dismissing the people and isolating them and making them feel as if, uh, you know, they, they, their questions aren't valid. I think that most black people, as you're growing up, there comes a point where you kind of start to reflect on yourself, your life, and the place of black people in, in the world. If you just see black people at the bottom all the time, always suffering injustice, always being oppressed. And then you look at Christianity and then you look at um, how black people came to be Christians, especially with regards to slavery. Yes, I can understand why people feel negative about it. People outside who are challenging Christianity, saying it's a white man's religion, it's given to you by the white man. A lot of Christians are not well learned in the scriptures and understanding the word of God. A lot of them don't know that for themselves and uh, mainly their, their pastors or um, an elder in their church will have that sort of knowledge but they just have like a um, surface level knowledge. So when they are approached by others who have a different way of thinking, they can be easily swayed. I left church and religion for, for two different reasons. For me, it just started off leaving the church, hearing sort of the same rhetoric uh, every week. It, uh, it, uh, it kind of became a bit boring for me, um, if I'm totally honest. And, and I just felt like that wasn't the right church for me. But when I left that church, my mission was to find another one. I never forget watching a, um, a lecture, or I guess you would say a, a speech um, by uh, Minister Louis Farrakhan. He wasn't speaking about church or religion. Um, he was just speaking about you know what is going on with the black community, and he touched on some 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 history, some African history. I didn't I didn't know I didn't know much about uh, you know African history, and so when he was started speaking when he started speaking about it, I kind of got a sense of conviction uh, in, in knowing that I don't know much about who I am and where, where I come from. And the more I started looking into our history, um, the idea of religion and spirituality and God started coming up quite a lot. And so, you know, um, and a lot of it was contradicting what I knew to be true, uh, you know, growing up as a Christian. Once I, I guess, discovered, uh, you know, certain things, it became very difficult for me to reconcile that with uh, the belief of, of Christianity. Sometimes I just think this quest for identity, you know, what aspect of your identity are you searching for? What I do find with the whole woke and conscious movement is that it targets those who are not necessarily um, like born in Africa. In Africa, The need to feel conscious um, definitely affects Caribbeans more than Africans because um, Africans have not suffered their identity being taken away from them. I think even in West Africa today, we still have the issue of uh, Eurocentrism. There's still very much uh, a reverence in a sense, the, the image of a white Jesus. People from the Caribbean will often start their history from slavery rather than starting it from 
at their, their African roots. In fact, some um, Caribbean people would even deny the fact that they're, they're African, which is ludicrous. I think it's because there are a lot of questions within our journey, within our history, that are not very easy to answer. How do I not lose my blackness? You know, how do I not lose my history of who I am? And how do I embrace Christianity knowing that it's okay to love Jesus, be black, understand my history and know that there is still an assignment that Christ wants me to do on the planet. What it does is it now gives you some sort of um, identity that you can latch onto, um, mainly focusing on Egyptology in terms of Egypt being the first civilization in the world and um, it was melanated people who occupied Egypt and ruled the world. The only thing that I guess I've observed in all of this is that unfortunately a lot of the people who are jumping ship from Christendom into you know these kind of new religious movements new ideas or kind of pick and mixing their own ideas number one have very romantic ideas about what africa is actually really like they kind of want to be you know i just want to be more black and more african so i'm going to start doing this and experimenting with this and wearing this and it's just like have you been to africa the most prevailing myths in this process of finding truth is that black people are only Christians because it was forced upon us in slavery. A lot of people who are woke would say it's the white Jesus and it's the white man's religion and it's the religion of the slave master. Christians can be very ignorant when it comes to this argument to just say oh it's silly it's folly and you know because they they're not engaging in history and they're not engaging into the actual arguments that are real. When they check history and say oh but these things were true they, they, these things did happen um, they, they now start to think as a church doing a cover-up. It is likely that my ancestors were forced to be Christians. I'm a descendant of a slave as far as I know. And so that in itself is problematic, but it doesn't mean Jesus doesn't exist. I remember going literally even this year to Sierra Leone and they took me through the journey of the slave ships and when they came through and where they had the Church of England church that sat um, in a certain place while they had slaves down um, downstairs while they was waiting to be shipped off and they had messages and preached messages and it, it, it rocked my heart you know as, as, as a black person you sit and you think how did this possibly happen it means the way that my ancestors have received um, a version of the truth is a big problem it needs to be readdressed what we saw with the transatlantic slave trade was inhumane and that was illegal um, that should never have taken place and that can never be justified because there's nothing in the Bible that justifies that. There's a church in Ethiopia just growing, developing their own ideas about how to basically be Ethiopian and Christian. The Ethiopian eunuch is preached to by Philip in the book of Acts. He now goes back to Ethiopia carrying that tradition which now has one of the oldest churches in the world. So the question is if it's a white man's religion or a slave religion, how comes they weren't enslaving each other in Ethiopia. It dispels completely the myth that Christianity, you know, is just a white man's conspiracy and it was just forced upon us and that there's no way for black people to be Christians because we have a perfect example of a strong and beautiful nation that have worked out how to make it um, their own, how they can maintain Ethiopianness. All the kids who go to Sunday school, they learn the Bible in their language. They learn about Ethiopian culture and history. And that's what we're missing here. But they've made it happen. And for me, it's proof that black people can be Christians. Um, and that really what we need to work against is that difficult part in between. It's clear as day that when we look at films like The Gods of Egypt, or we look at films like Moses, right? And we see Pharaoh, Ramses and all of the Egyptians, they're all white, but in your mind, you know, you're like, wait, hold on. Like, this is based in Africa. Once you start digging deep, you start seeing that, okay, cool. The people in the Bible were melanated people and were in Africa. However, what the media have done, they have whitewashed 
the biblical characters and the Egyptian characters. If that is what your stumbling block is, that stumbling block is now removed. Because based on history and based on geographics, what they're projecting can't be possible. What continent was Israel considered originally considered to be a part of? On top of that, why have we accepted uh, this separation of Africa and the Middle East uh, from for people that are from neither region? Jerusalem is next door to Egypt. Egypt is on the African continent and Jerusalem is considered to be in Africa before the creation of the Middle East, obviously. It's a complete non-starter to say that there is just no basis for a black person to be Christian and that there is no kind of black input or, um, or, or just black presence in the Bible because it is there throughout completely from beginning to end. I mean, you can even see the evidence of the statues that Napoleon, you know, and his men shot the nose off the pharaohs you know, just to hide that identity or that part of them. So if you can see the whitewashing of Egypt in Hollywood movies, then clearly you must be able to see the whitewashing of the Bible in um, the media and in the movies. I think the only thing that scares us about facing um, the, this challenge is the fear of not having the answers. That's a difficult question and I don't understand it, but I'm gonna go and find out. I'm gonna research, I'm gonna get an understanding of this so I can come back to you. There are a lot of people that are afraid to do that in church. It's like, if I don't have the answer for you now, then this must mean that I have failed. So I'm just not gonna talk about it. I'm just gonna avoid it. But where's the apologetics that goes on within your ministry to actually give these young people solid, solid answers about how do I defend my faith? You go to somebody and you say to them, why do you believe this? And they're literally like, I don't know. Like my mum told me this or my pastor told me this. The problem is that when they've learned or they've heard something, they've never been taught to say, look, go inside the Bible and check it for yourself. I think if I was to go somewhere and I was to ask somebody, like a really difficult question and they kind of just pushed me away and didn't respond to it. I'd feel like you've got something to hide. Nobody was here at the beginning. We shouldn't be afraid um, if we can choose a path of humility essentially um, and nobody in the room is ever going to know all the answers but it's important to continue the quest of trying to know and understand God. Give people a sense of how the Christian faith developed and grew because sometimes people are just locked in and just feel it's just a European, it's a European thing. The problem here is that um, young people are struggling to reconcile their Christianity with consciousness and I think the church leaders, the preachers in particular, they need to wake up. They, have, um, they are the ones who are sleeping. Sometimes we can come to church and there's just so much focus that we should be like Jesus and messages about the parables. Let's put um, the gospel message in a historical context. There's a lot that um, if our young people knew, they would feel less disillusioned and actually more inspired to go on for God. Being a Christian is not about being black or white. Do you know what I mean? And I know people who probably watch this start rolling their eyes, oh my gosh, he's been turned over or whatever it is, but it's not. i never forget, I was watching an interview by uh, Pastor, uh, Reverend Dr. Jamal Bryant. He was in an interview with George Bloomer and he made a statement which I'm sure many people will take issue with, but to give context to it, he said uh, he believes Christians are the most unintellectual believers on the planet. What he was trying to articulate was that many of them know what they believe but have no idea why they believe it. Being very deliberate about the choices that we make and trying to understand those choices because they change um, and because sometimes we do things and we don't know why. As Christians, we need to be the ones that are saying stuff about what's going on at the moment, whether it's like in the black community or just in Britain or whatever, we need to be saying something. We need to be creating resources that equip our leaders um, to talk about these topics sensitively, um, taking away kind of, you know, themes of dominance from the conversations, themes of authority, but dialogue. You know where the teacher is also the student and the student is also a teacher. Looking at 
um, a lot of our um, people, flagship models who have, who have been in the faith, who are no longer in the faith, who have denounced Christianity, it's very hard for young people to think, well, if they've done it, what, what, what's the point? The way that I've been able to hold on to Christ is to find him for myself. Basically, from day one, from when I became a Christian, I studied. What, what questions do you have about the faith? Is there is there an end goal that you want out of this consciousness? Like, you could still, you could still have that in your mind and still be a born-again Christian. The Bible says we're um, transformed by the renewing of our mind. So if your mind is renewed, then you are conscious. What's the most important thing? Is it your, your national identity or your spiritual identity? What does the cross mean to me? What does it mean to all humanity? The Bible has a bigger message than just ethnicity. I consider myself to be woke. I consider myself to be black conscious and Christian. Yes and no. Um, for, yes, because again, I don't believe I'm the authority on consciousness. Um, and I don't necessarily believe anybody is, so I don't believe I could tell somebody else that they're not. For me, as a conscious Christian, I'm interested in looking at the challenging questions and not just rolling around on the floor for five hours and, you know, waking up and saying, Lord, I'm trusting you for every good blessing. Do you know what I mean? How I can make changes in the name of Jesus in the world. Um, but also when I'm reading the Bible, what version am I reading? Where did it come from? What made people think that it was all right to enslave other people? It's important for us to be aware of what affects us culturally and socially because as much as we have faith and we believe in God we also live in a very real world you need to be woke and be a Christian I have started to question the Christianity that I've grown up in and by doing that by exploring by looking um, into my ancestry and more about you know the black agency its contribution I found more of Christ I think you just have to look at um some of the key figures within um, the black church over the years. Of course, people like Martin Luther King, um, Reverend Jesse Jackson, like I said, the Harriet Tub Tubmans, the Nat Turners, um, Paul Bogles. You know, those people, they were Christians, but they were woke, they were conscious. Some of them fought against injustice and they believed that God was with them whilst they did that. We need to continue to teach about our own culture and our own heritage and um, we shouldn't be ashamed of that um, and sometimes there is a feeling that you have to kind of you know um, be suppress who you are a little bit um, I think that's one of the things that one of the things that the culture puts on black people um, and for me one of the worst um, examples of that is this idea that we live in a colorblind society because to me, when you say that we're in a colorblind society, you're saying that you don't really recognize the fact that I'm black. And also just how you determine what is a lie and what is true as well. I mean, it's quite deep, it's quite big. It's a lifelong project, essentially, to do that. Um, obviously, the problem is, especially for me, who is a believer, is that Jesus is actually gonna come back. <laughs> do you know what I mean? So we can wonder for all of our lives, but when Jesus is in that cloud, what side are you on?